Right, we'll be off then. Okay, so about a minute before we start here. Welcome to Not So Sunny Harrogate today. Uh, we've got a couple of interviews that are going to be coming up that we pre-recorded, um, which were done when we had, uh, last week had a real dollop of snow and uh, you'll see a different backdrop altogether then. Uh, today's webinar, we call it, it's, it's a little bit between a webinar and a podcast. I, I quite like talking to people that do and achieve things. And I think that's very important when we're trying to get the context. And that's what this is. Where are we at the minute? It's our, it's our perception. We're not, this, yeah, it's our opinion. We're not putting our opinion on people. We're trying to find uh, ways of explaining how we see these things panning out. And I think that's very important for the business community, especially uh, those that are joining us today. And it's then to share. It's, you won't agree with every point. We're not asking you to. But it starts to make sure everybody starts thinking where we're going here because touch wood, the way the vaccine's going, we're going we're to be okay over time. And it starts to give it hopefully a bit of finality, not necessarily always in a good way. So the couple of things we put on in terms of our pre presentation here, uh, we're talking about uh, the recession. It's going to be strange. There are positive sides. There are going to be a lot of negatives. Uh, we're talking about our recent findings. And since the new year, we've had, on average, I think about five inquiries a day uh, and a few statutory demands flying around, even though, Technically, there's not a lot that can do them, but it's people just sort of starting to rev up, um, ready to go in terms of any proceedings. We also, something I keep going on, but I think it's very important. Mental health is one of those things where I think it's uh, over-reported at the minute with no, with no answer. It's, it's just, oh, I'm, and the mental health, nothing added. We're bringing a little bit here today with, a, with an old friend of mine, Paul Stalker, who uh, who's always been that way. He's a brilliant salesman, as you'll see in, the, in his pitch there. But it's very important to look at a little bit further and in terms of what it does to businessmen and women. As I refer to it later, it's possibly the worst form of uh, uh, pressure is that of debt. This recession is going to be different in terms of we're going to give a small comparison to the 2008 crash. This one's going to be different because asset bases have increased and appreciated over time. When they become into play, then the next point we're going to go to is cash, cash, in king, cash is king. Sorry. And uh, another friend of mine, friend, we've only met online and talked online since the crash, but uh, since the recession. Uh, but uh, a man called Matt Tristam, he's a very good uh, loan broker and he gives us his insight as to what's happening. Both guys and us to a degree will be talking about how we pivoted in terms of what's going on uh, and the flexibility that you require to overcome uh, various lockdowns. And here we are in lockdown three. So we've got, the, we've got the two guys joining us. There's a little plug. It's no cost, by the way. We're not selling anything here. This is a small book we've written, not hard to read and written in, a ter in terms and in a tone, hopefully, that says, you know, we're human beings. We understand the pressures. A little bit of light lightness to it as well. There's a glossary of terms. Uh, for those that are easily offended, don't look at those. There's a few uh, Fs and Jeffs, as my grandmother would have said. But that's going to be sent round as is a follow-up email, just with a couple of other links, if uh, anything's of use to you. So we'll crack on. I'm just going to quickly wing through a bit of an introduction here. So we're looking at lockdown three and what's going to happen in the next three or four months, because that seems to be the, the time that we're all looking at here. Nothing's, nothing's a gimme, but it looks like that's the way it's going to be. We mentioned there the strange type of recession. I'm actually doing quite a bit of reading. A brilliant magazine I can recommend to everybody at the minute. It's not too hard to read. Is Investors Chronicle. Not for the investment side, but the, the, the look at businesses and different industries and how they're panning out, because everyone's going to be different. Hospitality, getting a lot of uh, air time, quite rightly so, but it, it, that's going to obviously have a very bad time. But when you go into the minutiae of what's going on, there, there's so many different industries being, being hit in so many different ways. And as I said, if you've got personal exposure, you've got a huge uh, asset base there that could be vulnerable. Pivot and flexibility, very trendy words, very trendy, but so relevant to what we're doing today. We're going to give you a couple of insights into what we've done, uh, and Matt and Paul will also just, just touch on it. Paul had to change completely. He used to be on-site training. Now he's got a, a, a new um, subscription model he's had, he's had to develop, and that's how that goes. The mindset debt is very strange. It's something that I work quite extensively on. I know I often say, uh, I still see two men there. One's a farmer, and one's a, I call him a hairy ass builder, excuse the parlance. Both of them nearly break down when we discuss where they were. People have been f mentally ill and then physically ill on the back of uh, the pressure of debt. And it's, if somebody is in debt, be there for them. Be, 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 be you know, a set of ears for them, you know, somebody they can talk to. 
Because men, businessmen and women are very proud. They don't want to. They don't want to show failure, but it's a very important backup. So we've got Paul's interview. Uh, Paul had a, a series on Channel Four about positivity, and it's a little bit woo woo, but it's also very important the depth he goes into. And the Radio Four, uh, sorry, not Radio Four, Radio Times referred to Paul as a unconventional motivator. Going forward, yes, we've all been flooded with cash, with Sybils and Bibbles and everything else. But in terms of uh, cash in any assets, uh, excuse the pun, cash will be king. And that is going to be, that's going to change as we go through whatever form of re- recession there. And Matt's very uh, kindly given us a good input there, how his business has changed and the sort of availability of money. He also touches very slightly on property values and his perception of what's going to happen there. What we're going to do after this, this evening, between five and seven, and we would like, uh, if you could ping us an email, if anybody wants to talk, uh, we're doing a small workshop, our TB uh, business uh, development team are there, not to develop business. This is a follow-up. We're doing these webinars, sort of, again, like I say, it's not putting something back in, but it's giving a bit of perception and hopefully bringing thoughts together that can help people decide where they think things are going to go. We're not saying this is definitive. And like I say, people will disagree what we say. Um, and that's the way the world should be, not uh, as many of our people on social media seem to suggest when they speak, that's the way it is. So we're in lockdown three, possibly the worst movie ever. And as I said, the next three or four months are going to be very important as we come out of uh, COVID, still hopefully, touch wood, um, and we've got to be ready to react here. There's going to be so many things going on. You, 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 we're looking at all different types of recoveries here. And the reaction so far, I think, in the main from the business community is brilliant. It's not widely reported because it's it, it, they don't like good news. But our ability to change things, good support from uh, Rishi right the way through, how good is going to be going forward when it cuts up a bit ugly, we'll see. But the reaction so far from business is great. There's, there's, uh, yesterday, I was very fortunate. Somebody bought me a very nice meal online sent it to me. I had to cook it, but it was beautiful. Sent from a Michelin-style restaurant in Scotland. And restaurants have to change there. But going forward, these best laid plans can go go to pot. If uh, shops, restaurants, pubs, whatever, open, but they carry on losing money, that's when it's going to get ugly. And it'd be very, very, a very, very slow death. And it's going to be, you, you can plan for all you like. Nobody knows how people are going to react going back. We're very much creatures of habit. We got used to takeaways, ordering wine by the box as we do and everything else. So it's, it's, it's a big change to get people back out. And the experience, uh, a bit of a bit of one of those, which I don't really like, it's very different at the bar, man's armpit in your face, waving a 20 quid note at a bar person. He said, oh, he, oh, he wishes you could have those days back. Then with that as well, you've got to try and project. So you're going to land back in, your business is going to um, come back to some sort of normality or may still be going okay. We've, you've got to project up and down. Okay, so we've done that recently. We, we sort of pivoted when we got the, this latest lockdown because we were all geared up, all that was spent a lot of time in December planning. And then obviously back into lockdown uh, as this new strain of the virus came through. So we've had to change our, our plan and approach, which we did relatively quickly. But we had a what I thought was a brilliant marketing plan. Basically, that's, that's not binned, but you have to start again and pick out the relevance that you can actually do right now where uh, everybody's still at home. Post-vaccine injection, shocking pun, but that will, I think, bring some good news when that starts to flow, despite the attempts from mainstream media to moan about everything. I think that's going to hopefully put a bit of a bounce in our step. We should start coming into spring and everything else, so hopefully businesses start to open, uh, but it's it's how quickly the, these various uh, companies and businesses can come back. There's all sorts of... Uh, projections in terms of the, the recoveries here. And the, the one that catches my mind more is the K-shape. So you've got the top part comes down a bit and goes up. I think that's well, well uh, financed businesses will be okay. Those at the bottom will go and drop away. Unfortunately, I think that will also be the case in terms of redundancies as we go forward. You're going to get the, you know, when the businesses do get going, 
instead of the four baristas in a coffee bar, they may go back to two or three. The same with bars, the same with chefs, the same. And it, it's going to be pretty tough. Those there's still a lot of money around in the system, so it's how that comes back there. But I don't think it can drag uh, the whole economy up. So that's why they're looking at this K-shaped. There's also the swoosh, the Nike swoosh, and then, then some clampet at the Bank of England at some point was going about a V-shaped recession. There's another graph uh, we're going to show at the end here from, uh, not in, the end, in, a, in a while, from a man called David Smith, a, a very good writer in the Sunday Times. I don't think he's quite on pitch, but it shows what's gone on with the, the economies and GDP so far. So since uh, lockdown one, business has done brilliantly well, brilliantly well, even if they are absolutely on their backside. We've put that phrase there, screaming no noise, and that is when nobody knew what was going on. We, we closed down, no idea, uh, everything was shut completely. And so the, the screaming no noise is that dream when you fall and you make no noise. Now we're getting going again. This is where we've got to start to look to pivot. Sounds very trendy, but it's so right. and We've got to be ready to do it. We've got to find business. Business doesn't just come up. We're changing our approaches to, to various things. We, in the first uh, lockdown, we... We lost a bit of business in terms of writing business, but we were able to do a lot of settlements for clients. Our business in Spain more or less stopped because the Spanish obviously took it really bad to start with. And they're more concerned about that and or Brexit and everything else. So you've got to be ready to, to, to move. In terms of Spain, we've pivoted and now we're directing our, our approach to attract more business in a completely different way. In terms of our marketing, we had a great marketing budget set up. We worked extensively through December, setting ourselves up very well. And then Wallop, we're closed again. So we're picking out the salient points on that and touch wood, it's working. Um, we had to look at uh, our overhead base. We had to look at our marketing budget, our wage costs. Everything is everything is up for grabs. And you've got to keep doing it. You've got to keep doing it. We have to do this. And it's something very important what should come later in the mindset of debt is that you have to have a clarity of thought to be able to think. If your head is, as we say in Northern Ireland, fried, you, you've got no chance. You've got to be able to think clearly in terms of what you're doing. Then you can be creative. Then you can open up. But if you've got the pressure on and you can't move and you're stuck in your own way, a la, a la uh, Philip Green and Arcadia, too inflexible, cannot move. The speed, the property markets change commercially. Offices, not very uh, on vogue, whereas warehouses are now that the Googles of the world and everything else, and um, sorry, um, Amazon's the world. Everybody needs delivery facilities. And so it's changed so quickly in that time. And that, there's your, your ultimate pivot. And you see what's happened to uh, Amazon shares and like. So got to be ready to change yet again. We don't, nobody knows how it's going to pan out here. We've got Rishi's, um, because we're, we're on first name terms, Rishi and I. Uh, Rishi's first uh, proper budget coming up. Pretty sure he doesn't know what he's putting in there yet changing the way, all, all the rumours. But change has got to be embraced and change is good. Not for the sake of it, but change is good. And we have to keep that flexibility, like we say, and that be, be very ready to pivot at any one point. So um, that's enough on that. A bug, Not a bugbear, a real uh, subject of interest to me is the mindset of debt and pressures. Um, Again, I just, you have to be very careful here. Mental health is very, very important. I get that, right? But it's purely used, to my mind, in many instances, just to have a badge. In terms of businessmen and women, debt pressure is the very worst pressure after anything uh, that goes wrong with your health. It is undoubtedly the worst pressure ever. Very often, you're lonely with it. You've got the pride. You don't want to tell your wife, your husband, your partner, whoever, that you're fa you failed or failing. You don't know the unknown. There is so much BS out there about uh, debt pressures and everything else. There are solicitors who speak, excuse my legal friends, uh, speak way outside their brief when they talk about it. Any number of times we've seen the most shocking advice. And we made a, quite a bit of commentary in our book about mindset. And the real need to eradicate, wherever you can, negativity. If you're in uh, what we technically call the brown and smelly, the last thing is you want around you are negative people. They, we call them spine stealers, which basically if someone took your spine at your back, you just go like that. 
it's you've got to get rid of it, even if it's family. Not never speak to them again, but in terms of where you are at the moment, if they get on your nerves, they undermine what you're trying to achieve at the end of the day, basically to survive, get rid of them, get rid of them. Then another technique we called, which is which doesn't quite read as nice as it should do, the sweaty box syndrome, right? This is keep the problem in one place. Don't let it become all-consuming, which it will do. If you sit there and you think of this, you think of that, you wake up in the middle of the night, try it physically and mentally, keep it in one place. Go to it. It's not going away. Go to it when you need to, but get it out of the way. If you can get your head around where you're going and you know the very worst with the right advice, no advertising here, but get the right advice. You've got a chance, even if it entails going bankrupt, which sounds strange. There's different fights to have, but make sure you have the right ones. You cannot do that without the right mindset. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Simple clue. Paul, Paul's going to talk about it in this recorded interview we've got here in a minute. We all talk about our physical health. So I've been out for a run this morning. I try and keep myself fit, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we work hard at our physical health. We never work at our mental health. Nobody knows what to do. A lot of that does come from what Paul's going to uh, say here. And I say, Paul, I've known many years, uh, doing very well in what he does. He's worked for Car Phone Warehouse. He worked with Charles Dunstan there. He's not quite as cool as that picture, by the way. But that was his, that was his TV series that worked pretty well. Uh, and so he knows his stuff. He knows all about it. He is very unconventional. Take him for what he is, right? I'm pretty sure you'll have never seen anybody talk about psychology and the like as Paul does. So enjoy this. I'm going to come back in a minute and uh, we'll catch you after this uh, quick interview. Hello there. Right. Now we've got uh, an important guest, uh, an old friend of mine. So we're very close friends, but we always kept in touch. Mr. Paul Stalker here. Paul, how are you? I'm very well indeed, Terry. Very excited to... Very good. Uh, share this interview with you and give your clients and friends and co-workers some strength on dealing with debt and ha how to get the right mindset to clear debt, uh, both physically in, in the monetary terms, but also deal with it in your mind. So, yeah. I'm, I'm Absolutely. So, so, so important. We, we've just written a book, Paul, right? Uh, and we do something about the mindset of debt because it can become all-consuming. But let yeah. me give a little bit of a backdrop of what you're about. You and I have known one another for better or worse, for 30 odd years, right? Yeah. You, you, you've you always been immensely positive. We even did the, the Tony Robbins firewalk together in Brussels all those years yeah. ago, many, many years ago. Uh, and you've always kept in that four. Uh, if you don't mind me mentioning him, you, you, you've fought and seen off cancer. You've yeah. been on Channel 4 with your programme, so you must know what you're true. talking about. Yeah. Uh, brilliant, brilliant salesman. That's not your forte today. Your forte is helping people through difficult times in whatever form that takes. Sure. Mental health at the minute is almost like slightly abused as a word, but it is very, very important in the work you do there. Yeah. What else would you add to your CV, Mr. Stalker, that I missed there? Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm a father to five children. I have a beautiful wife. I have a couple of dogs and a lovely cat called Tommy, who is actually a girl, but we thought it was a boy. Um, <laughs> I've authored four books. I've been um, the, the, the pr predominant... Um, Subject in the Channel Four documentary, "Improve Your Life Now," which was uh, which went out on on, on Channel Four. So, but actually, I, I'm a person that just wants I've got eight pints of blood, like you all got eight pints of blood. And actually, by me giving this information, it's actually setting off good things in my body because I know I'm helping and supporting. So, it's an honour to help and support your colleague. I'm here to serve rather than anything. Brilliant. So cool. that, that's same thing. thing. That's what this is about. It's actually putting a little bit back. Yeah, we hopefully yeah. will get some business out of it one day, but that's cool. But it says to put something back. So yeah. just on, on a personal level, how are you finding lockdown? I mean, you work uh, from home usually, don't okay. you? Or you've got office yeah. yeah, I mean, on a, on a personal level, I'm going to answer that question in, in two ways. How is the market, how has the COVID and Brexit and the economy and Trump affected people's mindset? I would unfortunately say in quite a detrimental way. Um, how have I coped? Again, it's been very difficult because we had a business where we'd never, I'd never even done a Zoom call till March. We were old fashioned consultants. We ran events. We went to people's companies. We ran events in hotels. But now... You can't go anywhere. So it's it, the business has completely changed. I am enjoying it, but what comes with that is the, the learning experience of trying to run a digital business when you're in your 50s, which is not easy. Mm -hmm. So 
So, but, but on, okay. on the whole, I'm great in myself, but I am concerned about how many people are finding it tricky. And uh, in a minute, I'll explain to you why most people are finding it tricky on how we're what. Yeah. There's, that, there's that loneliness as well, isn't it? especially going in, in terms of, so we obviously we're talking about the business debt side. I know you're going to push back on that slightly, right? But there is no, no worse pressure, I don't think, in the world, apart from health, very, very important health, everything, right? Business debt pressure, especially with lockdown and potentially being alone, is so important how you deal with it. it be, otherwise, it become all consuming. So yeah. It's a, the, the only thing I'd say I'd agree, most of the things you're saying in your struggle with technology at 50, I'm in my 60s now, first first, first pitch in there. So, But, uh, <laughs> but you, you said about how your business has changed, Paul. So you, I know you're a big events man. And it, 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 in every sense where you're a people person, it yeah. was, you know, it's very, diff- very different on the Zoom. You can't get across the same thing. You know, you, you and I are big huggers and shaking of hands and all that sort of stuff, and all yeah. that's gone. It's amazing. Yeah. If we said this time last year, right, January, beginning of January, tell you what, we try social distancing before COVID, right? You're, yeah. What's the matter with you? You know? Yeah, yeah. So how, yeah. in terms of your business, give us a little bit more on that, how you've changed that, please, Paul. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, we are, we, we the demand for our products, probably the highest ever been because people are struggling. And let me tell you the predominant, this is A, for your well-being, but also when you're dealing with debt. If your our brains are very are very hardwired for, for tens to hundreds of thousands of years ago, because when we were out in in in, in the primitive times, obviously fear and, and danger was number one because we could be eaten uh, by a tiger or an, or a lion or a, a woolly mammoth. So so man needed really to focus on, on the negative, on the bad. So. We are still naturally hardwired. So you're fighting against your own wiring when you're dealing with this situation of of lockdown. So I'm really, really going to try and get you to be focusing on what you have got, what you are grateful for, because, okay, you are in business debt, but you are in England or you are in Europe probably and you do have a welfare system and you do have water and you mm-hmm. do have clothes and you do have food, most of you, and most of you probably don't sleep on the streets. So actually, you might have business debt A, but point B is if you've got food in your tummy and a roof on over you and clothes on you, you're in the top 10% richest in the world. Yeah. So I, I, I would I would urge you to think, okay, I am in a bad situation. I'm worried about it. I might lose the business, but actually, I'm probably not going to lose my life. So, uh, that, that is so, so there's context, isn't it? And the, the one thing, so everyone's very much about positivity, right? Which is good. Talk to me a little bit about negativity, right? So in our book, I encourage people to get rid of anybody that is negative around them, right? Especially if you've got the problems or whatever it may be, right? Be it health yeah. or be it business or debt. Even family. Not I'm just saying fucking don't, don't talk to them ever again. But in terms of your mindset, the negativity is the – I always say it's hard to be positive. It's easy to be negative. But negativity can take overtake it. So rather than talk about positivity, give us a little bit of a heads up on negativity and how to try and overcome that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is with negativity, it becomes all all consuming. So there's part of there's part of us, okay. So if you focus on a positive event, it would build neurons and neural pathways in your brain. So you think more positively, and your natural deep dis- deposition or disposition is gratitude or happiness. But the power of negativity, right, is that a, it's easier. You're hardwired to look for the bad, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you just do a to-do list and you've got 10 jobs to do, you'll always drive home. Or most of us will drive home and go, I didn't do those two jobs. So you're looking yeah. at the negative straight away. So it's easier. But then what happens is you start to dull your senses. And in the end, you are only you are you I actually think a lot of people feel more comfortable, particularly in England, downtrodden in a negative cocoon absolutely than, than they do getting out and pushing back. 
And yeah. the sad thing is, Terry, for me, this has got nothing to do with wealth or debt or social standing because I have clients that are billionaires but just never happy. <clears throat> Always. So you are the state you live in and the emotions you feel. Yeah. No how rich or poor you are, you might be in debt, losing everything, okay? And if you t- – well, I always think about this in the Caribbean. If I, if I go to the Caribbean or when I go there, you've got people in little huts or South Africa that have got nothing, a corrugated hut, and then all they want to do is go, Iron Man, with bare feet and no clothes and no home and no house and no road. Yeah. And they're as happy as Larry. I mean, I, I remember I go to South Africa most years and I go through, I do a bike ride, a big, big bike ride, like 100K or something, 110K. And you go through the shanty towns and they've all got no shoes on, they're jumping around, waving, smiling. Well, how come they can be so happy, whereas most people are not happy in, in, in a civilised nation? Because it, it's just, it's. I also feel strongly that don't focus on the news. Yeah, I think it's The Harvard <laughs> Review has given has get, got documentary evidence that three minutes of negative news a day will directly affect how you feel all day. So true. So true at the minute. So, it's, 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 the, the mainstream media I've been spouting on about, right? It just, it's, you, you, you know, it's just, it's not right what they're doing. It's not right what they're doing. So you want to like to because obviously this is going to be quite a short session, right? Can sure. you give us a little tip, right? So if you're not in good form and everything else, uh, life's not looking good. And when, I'm not belittling, I'm not saying, you know, it's lazy to be negative, but you're having a bad day, right? Yeah. Don't shout, right? Because you'll burst eardrums, okay? How do you break a negative cycle? Have you got a tip how to break a negative cycle? You no, know, very much so. I've got many tips. In fact, the first tip is buy this book. Oh, oh here we go. Big okay, self-pitch, yeah. good man. Buy, buy the book, You Can Raise Your Game. On Send Amazon. me that link, Paul, please. I'll put that yeah, on the email. It goes out after. Of course I will. And you know what? I'm that confident. If you read it and don't like it, I'll give you your money back. Cool. Because... It's 30 odd years of my experience with many, many people. But what we teach in there, like, first of all, there's a chapter called Praise Your Game. If you're not feeling good, okay, I want you to think what you have got rather than what you haven't got. Uh Okay. Can you see where you've got sight that some people don't have? Can you hear? You've got hearing that the deaf don't have. Can you walk? Well, you're not lame. You have ability. You have limbs. So actually, when people might be focusing on negative, I haven't got anything. Actually, you've got a lot more than a lot of people. So, where, where does that come from? Does that come from, uh, obviously, gratitude? Yeah. You know, I mean, as you say, you can have the darkest of days, but it, it, gratitude. I think I, 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 a saying that I would like your delegates to, to think about, your darkest day Mm. is someone's dream. Yeah. Because just remember what Bob Geldof did in Live Aid. One, two, three, yeah. there's another person passed away. Yeah. So are you really in that much danger? Is your family yeah. really in that much danger? Yeah. One, two, three, another life's gone. And if you just look at the stats, you know, COVID stats are bad, but I think it's something like 20, 25,000 people die a day, a, a day of starvation. So actually, yeah. are you in that situation? Uh, There's yeah. 25,000 people that were. So I always try and think, no matter what, what tricky day I'm having, mm-hmm. actually, there's someone else that would love this dream, would love Yeah, it. love that problem. Yeah, they would, because they, yeah. they genuinely would. Some people are, are so um, deprived in the yeah. countries like Afghanistan or all, all of these warm torn countries, you know, we, we have got we have got a society that, that that you can walk down the street in. You can yeah. you can pray to whatever God you want. Well, and in a lot of countries, you can't even you can't have a religion. You can't have any freedom. You can't have a library. Yeah. So I think it's a step to get the, get the get the gratitude and break the cycle. Yeah. At the end of the day. I would strongly recommend that if anyone is in a difficult situation at the moment, we call it a gratitude log. We actually have a chapter called Gratitude and Attitude. 
because we believe with thankfulness you genuinely genuinely are more happy and have a right at the right attitude so i've got one here so i've kind of got a little book my right. little heart on it and i would write every day but don't, it hasn't got to be massive like a bike ride or a, a, a little can of guinness or a walk in the in the forest or a glass of water that's come out of my tap or a warm shower or do you know what i mean or yeah just listening to uh, uh, there's a there's an app called calm or what's your yeah. other insights timer In, insights timer that's really helpful terry because they they play you little meditations but for me doing a gratitude log there is scientific evidence that you will genuinely feel better and mm -hmm. start developing um, a natural disposition of happiness because you look if you get up it's a great day whether you're in business debt or not one day you're not going to be on the earth you're going yeah. to be up daisies so actually if you get up it is a good day everybody it's a good start good start giving you up giving the option right i'm gonna to have to cut you relatively short we got your elevator pitch right so we've got your book you've got that pitch that's brilliant yeah, sure. in terms of what you're doing in your thrive program because obviously this has come back to the virtual side where you've had to sort of like we said, pivot in terms of your doing business. Give us give us a heads up on what's going on with Thrive then, Paul, so that people – and, again, we'll put the link out afterwards to the website yeah, so anyone points to contact you. If people do want to use it, just knock yourselves out. Feel free to do it. So tell us about Thrive. Yeah, so Thrive is a evidence-based course that looking after your mental health and looking after your well-being is, is just as equal – equal mentally than physically we all kind of get we need to walk and get we need to not look after uh look after our weight but with thrive we meet three times a week you can join it free for a month but that's kind of a light version or or the paid for version you get a seminar with me on a monday for 15 minutes at 8 30 and i do a q a with you all so i personally guide you i do a speech for 15 minutes which is principally scientifically led. So we try and give you the evidence, the scientific evidence behind happiness and well-being. So you can actually put the two and two together. We then meet on a Wednesday with my doctor, as Dr. Rosie Daniel, and we do a joint seminar. She saved my life um, and she's very close to me. So she's a Harley Street doctor. Her courses are run at Harvard University. She advises uh, the Prince of Wales so she's up there and she saved my life. So we have found a huge amount of need to help people on many different subjects. Then we do a Q&A afterwards. And then on Friday today, we'd, I've just had a speech this morning, 8.30 again with a Q&A. So it's three sessions a week. Mm -hmm. You get uh, one-to-ones with me on the group uh, asking group questions. You get a workbook each week. You get the recording of that. So if you miss one, you can catch up. It's quite, it's 37 quid a month or 297 if you pay for the year. Um, but I just, the, the response we've had is unbelievable. And I want you to leave you with this, right? Good. That looking after your mind and looking after your soul and looking after your well-being is like putting the bins out. It doesn't stop. It's like having a shower. You can't have a shower on a Friday and then not wash to the following Friday because you smell looking after your well-being is a real live living thing uh -huh. so get on board yeah get on board and it is a game changer and I'll, I'll give you a guarantee if you do it for a month and don't like it and you uh, and you have done it for the month i'll refund you 37 quid because actually i just want you to be well to be strong for you and your families and that's what that's what i what that, that's what gets me going giving to that's people brilliant. And changing their states. That's brilliant. What's the website, Paul? Give us your give us your it's www. Raise, raise yeah. www. Raise r a i s e university. dot co. dot uk. So it's raise cool. university well, well, all one word. dot co. dot uk. And you can go on there. You can join up for the light version for a free month, or you can go the paid for version where you do join the Q and A's and you have personal interaction with me. 
Brilliant. Because that is so important. I do you do go on about this with our team about yeah, you, you everyone goes on about your physical health, da, 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 but mental that has to be worked at anything. The clue's in the name, health. You've got to work at it, haven't you? Yeah. But we don't. We sit there. And the amount going again from the social media, what they uh, not social media, mainstream media, they go mental health, and they just throw it as a little bomb, no solution. You know, medical people on TV, they shouldn't be doing, they shouldn't be even using it unless they've got something to come back with as well. Well, you know, we're worried about mental health. Don't fucking worry about it. Do something about it. Yeah, the reason I actually got into this industry, Terry, is when I was given 12 weeks to live and I was put in the priory because my chemotherapy wasn't working and I was paying £500 an hour for a psychologist and his name was Dr Julian Bird and I used to go in there and he said, well, what are your problems? And I'd sit there for an hour telling my problems and he'd give me not one practical solution or tip or strategy to overcome them and i've dedicated my life to overcoming them with strategies so that that is what we're, we're about solving problems yeah. not just listening and sharing them. yeah it's good yeah. to share but it's even better to have a proven strategy to get rid of it that's brilliant okay mate well thank you very much for that we'll get that message out there and the last Absolute links. pleasure thanks for your time Speak pleasure to you very night. nice to see you See you when you're older. Even older. Bye. Good luck. Hopefully that's us back. Sorry about that. Small technical. Uh, different, isn't he? Very different is Paul there and his, his, his approach to things. He, he, he has done and achieved. I say he's had a terrible time in terms of physically with the cancer uh, and which he overcame ultimately. And a lot of through that, through, through, through his, his approach to life generally. But he's also a brilliant operator. He, uh, Sir Charles Dunstan at uh, Carphone Warehouse, big, big uh, fan of Paul's. And he gave Paul a project there in America, take the 20 worst stores and see what you could do with them and achieve fantastic things. A little bit of selling technique, but more of the approach for the guys and gals that are in the shops and see what they could do. So, yeah, I just want, just want to just, sometimes hear in one voice going on and on. We've both got voices that are great cheese. I get that. But it's still very important to hear it reinforce it, repeat it, because we don't react straight away, 21 times to change your habit, all that sort of care. So if nothing else, let's work at our mental health and make sure we're strong, especially in business terms. So back to back to the theme here in terms of business debt pressures, no negativity, like we say, but reality is required. A fine dividing line here, fine dividing line. There's no point going around, woo, woo, everything's great because it isn't going to be there. But it's getting that ability, like I said earlier, the ability and the clarity to think, the, the clarity to be creative in everything we do. If I'm under all sorts of pressure, you know, usually client-based pressure, stuff like that, it, it, it dampens your ability to really resolve things. You need to be able to pull out to go back in so you're ready to ready to push it. Uh, here we go with quarter two. So here comes uh, quarter two after we get out of uh, hopefully this lockdown. And a lot of things are going to come to head. It's going to be a perfect storm. Again, we're not coming on a negative angle. The end of the world is nigh. We're pointing out the bloody obvious here. Okay. Rich's Coronavirus Act, which has done very well for landlord, uh, for tenants, sorry, protecting them, but also putting some landlords in, in, in trouble here. That's coming. That's apparently that's not being extended after March. The courts will start to open and take in all sorts of proceedings going to come through. The Bibbles at 50,000, the Sibbles to whatever level uh, companies took them, there's going to be a requirement to, to repay them. Obviously, there's a, there's a pub just across the way there, the Montpellier, and he's got a little sign outside. Since lockdown one, he's been closed for 210 days. I hope he hasn't got too much debt around him because obviously he's got to go from a standing start at best um, and that's going to be tough enough. But there, there's all of these got to be, got to, have, have got to be met. You've had the, we've had the HMRC deferment schemes that are all going to come to an end. Uh, we've got furlough, which isn't on here on property side of things as the stamp duty holiday. I think that's a little bit of a misnomer. That one might be able to grab a bit of cash in the bigger deals, but, uh, but there's a lot happening there. And Rishi has got his, I think it's the 6th of March, Rishi's uh, autumn st uh, spring statement. So we'll see what he's going to put in that budget there. And the market recovery will be weird. Some, some people aren't getting overly affected. I know a couple of car dealers are doing very well. 
very well avail themselves of some facilities there to make sure they've got the right working capital and really ploughing on. Others, coffee bars, we don't know how they're going to open. We don't know how, how we as humans are going to interact when we get back, how we're going to deal with going into a pub, a couple of great bars in Belfast I love to go. No idea how they're going to work. Uh, what, one of the owners there, Willie Jack, was talking about how it's going to work in some real high-volume pubs. It's, it's going to be very strange to start with. This was a wee graphic I was uh, indicating earlier that David Smith, who I like a lot, writes in the Sunday Times, you get a chance. Not too heavy, just indicating where uh, GDP has gone. That's usually a measure of what's going on in the recession. And he is very bullish in the second half of this year, which I'm not sure. I just, yep, definite uplift, and that's really, yep. I'll come flying back when we get back out of where we are at the minute. But whether we get back to that uh, 100% of GDP, I'm not sure. And it's the mix that's going to be there. It's, you know, each and everything is different at the moment. Every business is different. Some are crazy. Try and buy some, I was trying to buy some running trousers last night because I'm an athlete on um, Amazon. No. Yeah, unless you want XXL or XXS, you know, there a lot of people are out of stock in that sense. But you look at any of the retail stores, you've got M&S in there and you've got all the other guys. There's a couple of department stores in Harrogate and they've, they've stuck with winter stock. And there's a guy I know who deals with Benetton. <laughs> They're asking him what he wants, uh, what he's thinking about next winter in terms of his stock. And he said, what I'm thinking is using the bloody stuff I've still got that I can't give away. So it's uh, very, very strange how it all comes back. And there's going to be, unfortunately, victims in all this. But again, that's very important how we as people will deal with that. So I don't want to go on and on about that. That, but that, that's that's sort of uh, where we're going to go. And if we are facing problems in business, cash is going to be keen to resolve them. So at the minute, there is a lot of cash in the system uh, from the last lock from the lockdown from the last crash. Sorry, there was uh, a lot of cash pumped into the system in the form of QE. Um, and this is a strange recession compared to the last one because there are assets this time. Asset values uh, slumped in the last recession. In Ireland, Northern Ireland, absolutely through the floor. Not as bad as England, Wales and Scotland, but a massive effect. Also, there's a clue in the name, credit crunch. There was no bloody money at all about. And it was, uh, again, falling and not screaming situation. Since that date, asset bases and uh, portfolios and homes and buy-to-lets and everything have improved in terms of value. Yes, they may have debt against them. And if you are in a tricky place, they will essentially be perceived to be cash. So the great ethic that we all used to work on was, you know, work as hard as you can, pay your mortgage off, and then everything's cool. It's not if you've got some personal exposure, be it a personal guarantee uh, of any form, be it uh, you're trading as a sole trader in a partnership. And this is perceived to be cash, and you need to be able to realize something from that. There will be a lot of pent up litigation and recovery. So when the doors do open again, when Rishi release the beasts, as we say, then there's going to be an absolute maelstorm of uh, litigation and people attempting to recover what they've what they've lost. There's been a, quite a bit of patience so far. The courts we speak direct to um, access only uh, direct access barristers, and they say the court system is going to be under some pressure in the next few years. But it'd be relentless and it still come, which is why cash is king. If you've got 100 grand of X in your house and you can realise 50 of it, suddenly you've got your stunning itself in a place where you can start to attract the creditors' attention. But it's going to be so important. So with that backdrop, there's a guy I've been doing a bit of work with, Matt Tristan, who's a good uh, straight-talking guy, runs a loans warehouse, win, win an award a, a week. They're very, very good at what they do. And Matt, Matt's kindly uh, given me time before, and he's, he's quite he's, he's route one. Um, knows his stuff, knows his business. He's quite open. He talks about his business and how he had to pivot. He also ends on something we're doing here, uh, and I'm, I'm on it as well as a little charity thing. We're not doing a charity charity stuff that uh, uh, Nicey used to do. But if you can see your way to helping this charity, that'd be great. You've got nothing else to spend your money on. You might as well chuck a couple of quid at it. And uh, say, Matt was giving us his, his perception of how things are going. Uh, that's the, uh, the, the bull chap on the right, Matt. And as you can see, the weather was another, another awful day. That was a really bad day. But have a listen to this because Matt, Matt's, Matt's an interesting guy. Gives us his insight that, as to see how he sees things going. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a recorded interview that we're slotting into the webinar today. I'm very pleased to be joined by Matt Tristram, who runs Loans Warehouse. Can you just put your logo up there, Matt? Let's have a look at the logo on the T-shirt there, please. 
T-shirt. Looking very good. There it is, Lloyd's okay. Warehouse. Uh, we're talking to Matt. Matt, I, Matt and I have only really met during lockdown. We've never taken ale or wine, which will come one day. But uh, in terms of today's discussion, what we're talking about is uh, how Matt has been affected in terms of his business. Matt is a doer. He's out there. The reward winners in terms of what they do. Multi award winners. He showed us yesterday. He's a pile of pile of trophies, and uh, he he gets on with it. He's quite forthright in his views, which is what we're about. And also, he's done it before, but he's in in the middle of a, a major charity fundraiser, which uh, I'm involved in. But Matt will tell us a little bit more at the end. If you can see your way to throwing a bit of money at that fundraiser, and that'd be good. As I was saying to Matt the other day, he's got, you've got nothing else to spend the bloody thing on, so you might as well give a little bit to charity, and that'll be really good. So, welcome, Matt. Good morning, Terry. How are you? Good, sir. Good, sir. So, tell us a bit about Loans Warehouse, Matt, and the sort of products that you provide, if you would, please, to start yeah. with. So, Loans Warehouse is an established loan broker. Um, we started started running we started originally as a secured loan brokerage although with many secured loan brokers you often do personal loans side by side um, and over the last six or seven years we've also done bridging finance so we do second charges personal loans and bridging loans and we as well as taking our own inquiries we work alongside a lot of mortgage brokers who have inquiries where a mortgage isn't suitable, so they will refer to us. And we work with a lot of aggregator sites and online um, comparison sites who offer our products and we provide the fulfillment, whether that's an automated fulfillment with personal loans or a more manual one where you have a qualified advisor with bridging finance and second charges. Very good. Complete elevator pitch there. Excellent. If people wanted to look at fundraising and they wanted to come to you, is it, it just go to your website and follow the follow the way through, or do they lift yeah, the phone? Absolutely. Um, we have one single office or one team. Um, our telephone number is on the website, and anyone wants to talk to us, whether if that's a if it's a customer who wants a loan, they just phone up and say, "I'd like to apply for a loan," and they can talk through to one of our team. Or if it is a mortgage broker, they phone up and say, "Look, I'm a broker, and I have a client. I'd like to discuss a loan option with you." And away they go. One thing I would say about Matt, I'm sort of talking to our audience as such, but you don't get slow notes. They've got their in-house underwriters, I'm not selling anything here. But very often you go to some organisations and try and hook you in, take you down a certain path, etc. You don't get any BS at uh, Loans Warehouse. They, they drive you down a certain road and, and they will find a product to fit if they can. Yes. Obviously, if, it, if, it, if there's some adverse part to it, obviously that attracts a certain type of cost. But as we said earlier in the in the webinar there, we've got a very strange recession coming. Assets are out there are plenty and uh, creditors and or pressing uh, uh, loan, loan, loan companies and the like will look to enforce their security. So you've got to be very careful and release cash. And that's what Matt's about. So Matt, in terms of lockdown three, and lockdown one, how has that changed your business as you've gone through and, and your, your mindset, if you like? You know, we, 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 for instance, had a plan ready to start the new year, but then obviously the new variant came in down to lockdown three, the movie. And so we have to change again. What about what, how is it affecting you there? I think every day there's a different, I'm not going to say hurdle, I'm just going to say challenge. There's a different challenge every day. And the reality of it, as tough as it may be, and some days it feels relentless, is that you just have to keep going. Every day there will be something different, whether that's an individual, whether it's a lender. But overall at the moment, I believe we sit in a hell of a lot better position than we did in lockdown one. Just very briefly, lockdown one had a huge amount of uncertainty around it. You know, none of us had ever seen anything like this before. And the second charge market and the personal loan market and the bridging loan market were all heavily affected for various different reasons. Um, lockdown two was different. The biggest difference is because of the schools that stayed open, which allowed people to work because the majority of people have adapted and a lot of businesses have adapted. Lockdown three, I know a lot of people said, oh, we knew it was coming. I, I, I didn't think there was a third full lockdown coming as they are. Um, we had great plans. Um, we do have great plans for 2021. January, the first quarter of the year, is always very busy for people applying for loans. Everyone has New Year's resolutions. They reflect. They look at debt. They mm -hmm. think, I want a better way to do it. And for as long as I can remember now, January has actually been the busiest month of the year for new inquiries. Um, 
we're in a bit of an unknown. We are very, we're lucky enough to be very busy. We did a lot of work during the first lockdown. We used that time well to speak to a lot of new partners who now use us for their loan inquiries. Um, we had lots of people trial us in Q3 and Q4, and it was very successful. And the market, second, the second charge market and the bridging markets recovered, I'd say quite quickly in Q, the end of Q3 and Q4. And that is continuing. Both markets are releasing updates on a daily basis of lenders that are improving their products, returning to pre-pandemic levels of Good. growth and products and equity. And I suppose the biggest overall difference that's causing that is there isn't uncertainty now. Yes, we're in a difficult period, but there is vaccinations being rolled out. I, you know, yeah. on websites and you can see the numbers that are going every second and it's going up. And you know, if you ignore the, what the end is in sight, we don't know where it is, but the end the end is in sight. So we, yeah, we, we, again, when you said about lockdown one, when we first spoke, no one had a notion where it was going. Yeah, we all so thought. How, how are the lenders? How are the lenders, Matt? What are they? What are they, I mean, obviously lockdown one, they would have been sat there, same with everybody else, wondering what was going on. How, are they relatively confident going forward in the lenders you deal with? Yes, there's a smaller pool of lenders who are active at the moment. There's still a few that are very reserved at the moment, but yep. the there are for every one that is being reserved, there's another that's seeing this as an opportunity. The shift in power if you like, if that's an appropriate phrase to use in the seconds market, has definitely changed. Optimum for us still sit at the okay. top. Um, but Oplo, who used to be called First Stop, I forgot their name for a second there, First Stop, um, have certainly leapt ahead of the majority of the competition. They are, without a doubt, the fastest growing second charge lender in the country. UTB have made great strides during the pandemic. Um, so, you know, the market at the moment you could, is condensed, but on an almost daily basis, we're seeing improvements. Yeah, yesterday, we saw Equifinance, a lender that we've dealt with for many years, very successfully reduce, uh, reproduce um, or re-release a range of plus products, as they call them, which is for customers with slightly less equity. Um, but that's great. It's another higher, LT higher LTV product. Um, Oplo have reduced rates this week. Optimum last month made a massive change to their scorecard and their rate. Everything we're seeing from second charge loans is positive. Similar in the bridging market, MT Finance, who are mentioned on our shirts. I keep, I'm re reflecting, so I keep pointing to the wrong side. Um, <laughs> they today have reduced rates, increased uh, LTV. I've just seen a press release on that. Hope Capital did have put some improved products out there. It, it, it's it's that really a lot, lot of action. Yeah, there's a lot of action. Yeah, when you're going, in oh, uh, but in the background, because obviously all this is secured lending, okay. And then, uh, how do you see it, or how are lenders seeing it? And valuers, obviously, you deal with them day in day out. Have you got any sort of thoughts and views on that, where the property market's going to go? We've got Rishi ending, oh, so supposedly ending stamp duty uh, at the end of March, and there's been a big dash. Obviously, no matter what what, what anybody says in terms of going on the property, do you see any correction or? Um, what the government are going to do, I don't know, uh, from my point. I, I hear a lot of noise. Some people saying they'll extend it, some don't. Uh, what I know is what there is at the moment, that we are not seeing any impact on valuations at the moment. A, surveyors are able to still work. They were one of the groups of people that were allowed by Boris from the new lockdown to continue going because the property market, they want to continue. And on the whole, surveyors have kept working and they, you know, will be walking into houses, taking the precautions and, you know, should get a mention for that. But they are, we are not seeing properties overall downvalued as a result of the pandemic as it stands. There is still massive demand, as reported by Zoopla and any other property website. Mm -hmm. Valuations are coming in without a great effect. Um, and, you know, that's how we see it at the moment. My personal opinion, I don't see a massive crash. There is pent up aggression at almost everything. Um, yes, standard. Is that region? Is that across the regions, though, Matt? Because obviously you're you're Watford based there within the M25. Would you, do you, regionally, is there any change or no? Well, like we're not we're not seeing. Oh, we we can only go on. You know, I I can read something and quote what I've read, or I can. I can look to property different value. So loans warehouse deals in England, Scotland, Wales, and a little bit in Northern Ireland. Um, but certainly England, Scotland, and Wales, we aren't seeing massive regional differences. It's the odd comment, you know, you speak to someone, oh, we haven't seen this uptake, but we aren't, we're certainly not seeing a dip. We're not seeing 
um, as a trend, valuations coming in lower. There's caveats on valuations, but you know, in, in valuations terms, we are not seeing that the pandemic, there isn't a decrease in demand at the moment. Now, yes, that might change whether it, at whatever point the stamp duty changes, but will that just suddenly come thundering down? I doubt it. Uh-huh. Um, you know, but there will be people that, you know, when it first stops, there'll be people that just must out that will still want to complete. So that yeah. there is people that have got interested again. You know, at the end of the day, people are buying properties to rent them, move or stuff like that, or, or rent them and make money out of them. They're making money out of them, so they'll keep doing it. The market is generating, the market is moving, and people aren't, you know, they're sitting on capital. They're sitting on money. Um, There's money around, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. This isn't like the recessions that we saw, the credit crunch or stuff like that. No. But there's a lot of money. There's a lot of liquidity. There's just... A very strange time. Um, so my personal opinion is I don't see a massive crash. And I, God, I hope saying it out loud, I haven't jinxed it. But, you know, there'll be a few bumps along this year. But I've got huge expectations for this year because mm-hmm. everybody is pulling in the same direction. Everyone wants to achieve yeah. There yeah. is a doom and gloom. So, that, you know, that's what I've seen. And I've seen nothing to the contrary of that. Very good. Very good. Right. A bit of a personal question, right? Not, not that sort of personal, but in terms of lockdown one and lockdown, th- lockdown three, okay? What have you, what have you learned, not necessarily about yourself, you know, not contemplating that, but about you and your business? How, how has it sort of affected you in that sort of period? Right. As an overall of the business, the biggest change is the children being at home because people don't have time. Uh, a lot yeah. of what we do in our business involves someone being on the other end of the phone or someone having availability for evaluation. We are seeing valuations are taking longer at the moment because of that increased demand, another sign. Mm-hmm. We are, people have, it's not so much less time to talk, but well, I suppose it is less time because homeschooling, you know, I, yeah. homeschooling is, it's going to sound ridiculous, one of the biggest challenges I think most, most adults will ever face. Yeah. It is impossible to do your job. My job is a full-time job. I get into work at eight o'clock most mornings. I leave at six and I don't very often switch off. I'm still replying to emails, answering questions, taking messages from staff. You know, something might happen. You don't switch off. Now add in six hours a day where Mm. you are supposed to sit and educate your child, which I appreciate is important, uh, hugely important. But when your child is sitting in a classroom of 30, I have a six-year-old, so I'm basing on that. When your child sits in a classroom of 30 people, a teacher has control because they're in charge overall and a child looks, you know, and sees everyone else doing it and doesn't want to stand out. So they have almost a bit of a herd mentality that overall means they can maintain control. If I say to my six-year-old, right, I want you to sit in front of your computer with a um, with Zoom on and listen to a teacher in the class there, there's a huge nervousness. She doesn't have the attention span to do it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know the stuff. Teachers study. You know, I'm pretty sure all teachers are qualified to do what they do. And parents aren't. I'm not a teacher. Mm-hmm. You know, in all my things in business, it's been said many, many times, my good, my bad, my bad, I'm a bad teacher. But it's it's just impossible. So that's affecting people's mindset and stuff like that. Overall of what I've learned. But you, you as a business, how have you changed, Matt? As a business, how have you changed? We've just had. Oh, what, what have you learned about the business? Uh, what, yeah. as in dealing with people or. You know, no, business- across the board, just you, just you as a business. How, I mean, you've got, you, like you, I think you mentioned earlier, you've got to be able to, to, like you said, react. You've got to be ready to change very quickly. And it's those sort of things. If you've got to stay business, if you're a, if you're a corner shop there and that's all you do, and not, not in foodstuffs, but just a normal retailer, you know, and you don't change, you're, you're in trouble. It, yeah. And but the, the thing is, you can't, up to my mind, you can change quite quickly for, for the good as well. So yeah. we, 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 we changed our model. I think we would have changed our model quarterly through 2020 and then most likely this first quarter, definitely. It depends what you consider changing your model. And I, I actually slightly, whereas everyone talks about adapting and stuff like that, uh-huh. we are very good at completing secured loans. We are very good at computing bridging loans and we have very good technology from completing personal loans. I do not know how to do commercial finance, debt management, any other type of things. And if I go into that arena, I've always thought that I'm – no better than anyone else. I have nothing that makes me stand out about everyone else. So how will I succeed? And yes, of course I can learn. But we've what we've done through this, this whole pandemic is we have pretty much stuck to what we've done. We've made improvements. We've got better. When I say we've adapted, we've seen this problem and we found a solution for it. We maintain fantastic relationships. It brings you together. Whether that mm-hmm. be lenders in a field, all lenders and brokers, you talk a lot more. You know, that sort of battle and competition is still there. But it 
it softens the edges and you work together. Yeah. Of your staff, you can't sit and dictate in a period like this. You have to listen. You have to work together. And you do build a team mentality. Yeah. You know, our business, there are businesses around us in the same sector, in the same area that have made huge redundancies. We are very lucky that we haven't found ourselves in that position because whatever the reason be, maybe we worked harder, maybe we're leaner, um, and maybe we made some decisions that were better by luck or by good judgment than others. So what we've got is a group of people that are here that have extra faith in Sam and I as leaders of this business that we will get through it. They're not going to be made redundant because they all know people that have. And that builds unity. Yeah. Unity puts you together and you work better and you work harder. And my secret to getting through um this pandemic is nothing revolutionary it's just very hard work no quit what you're good at do more of it listen to people and try to work with people and find solutions it's as simple as that i i am you're never going to hear one day that matt tristram suddenly does something different because it was a credit country recession this is what we do and we adapt how we do it but yeah. i'm going to do no, something sorry. because i don't know how to do it. i'll be no better at anyone else Massive thing, massive, massively agree with you on the team ethic. It's a thing I always push prior, prior to uh, prior to the pandemic. Team ethic is everything. Which this is this sounds nearly sound like a good interview. Moving on smoothly, Mr. Tristan, into team hope and the charity. You do. If anybody doesn't know about this, Matt is all over social media in terms of a great fundraiser he and Loans Warehouse have taken. And it's not a, it's not a begging bowl, but if you can contribute, there will be a link sent through later. And Matt's Matt's come up. Matt Matt and I'm of a certain age. Matt is a uh, not kind of be not rude, but not quite a natural athlete. Yeah, but no, we've said Matt not. Matt's Matt set up this brilliant charity, and it's absolutely flying. Uh, sorry, this charity fundraiser. So Matt, tell us about that if you would. Give us a, you've got you've got a two minute two minute okay. elevator pitch on the charity. Every every December you have a lot of excess. You have a lot of fun and you eat too much. Every January everyone makes up things I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to do it. So a couple of years ago, we came up with an idea where we put a running machine in the office, drew a map, and we ran from here to Timbuktu and got sponsors for it. First year, we did it for the dog's home. Last year, we did it for three children's hospitals. And then we can't put a running machine in our office at the moment for obvious reasons. So we thought, right, okay, we'll go out. I'm going to run the streets. There's lots of apps like Strava. And there is a charity in Watford called New Hope. And New Hope helps homeless people around um, Hertfordshire. Looking out of your window there, Terry, I appreciate you're not based in Hertfordshire. Look how cold it is. Of all the things in all the world at the moment going on, I would not want to be adding to it by having to sleep in a corner somewhere. Um, so New Hope was the most, was the, had the biggest local presence and we thought that was the best way we can hope. So it started off with 20 of us from Loans Warehouse that said we would run the equivalent of a marathon in January. I couldn't run a marathon on its own and my life depended on it. 26 point miles is practically a mile a day for most of us, which I am not used to running. It is snowing, it is raining. So we go out every evening and we put a mile in and over the month, <coughs> we've agreed it. That then expanded. We now have 120 people across the finance industry, including yourself, who have all taken part and are all going out, tracking their miles to run 26.2 miles in January to raise money for New Hope. Our target is 15,000. That target has been set because New Hope said that was their target of corporate fundraising for the year. So we want to smash that in the first month and in the coldest month, one of the coldest months of the year, give them money that can be raised. And you can donate to that and sponsor the people by the Virgin Money link, which I believe Terry is going to put as part of this podcast. Yep. We, we're at about 9,000. We will hit 15. We will go beyond it. But it's more the fact that there's 120 people that have all joined in and all run in the streets in no matter what weather. And there are a lot of them that are running in weather like we see out of your window. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's pretty good. Great pitch. Great pitch. And it's, 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 it's really good. And Matt, Matt's got his in everybody enthused, and especially this time of the year. Uh, yesterday we were talking and commented on one of my speeds and suggested that I, may, I was going that slow. I may have been loitering. <laughs> I, I call it that. That was like a bit of an incentive. I went out last night and I think Mo Farah might struggle to keep up with me last night. I fairly tore around town. Okay. But it's a brilliant thing. We're just going to send a link. If you can, just put a five or a tenner onto it. That's good. Anything you can do would be great. More, more you know, obviously anything's welcome. But it is so, so worthwhile. As, and especially small charities as well. We work, uh, we work extensively with the NSPCC, but small charities as well, because they're all getting walloped. It's not, it's not, a, not a soft soap thing. We're, we're commercially minded people. Every now and again, you want to do the right thing. And then, Matt, you've brilliantly applied commerce to it. So well done, you. More power to your elbows, sir. Thank you. Right. Man. That'll do us, Matt. Thanks for your time. We're best going to do a bit of work. Excellent. I'm going to go out and build a snowman, and I'll speak to you soon. Look after yourself, Thank mate. You. Thank you very much, Terry. Always good to chat. Thanks, Take Matt. Care.
in. As Mattresson, hopefully we enjoyed his, his input there. Um, particularly strong on, on the business side of what he's done. Not going to go on and on. There's, there's a link going to come over there. They're doing brilliantly well with this. They're over, well over the 10,000 now since we spoke then. And if you can, can put anything to it, that'd be great. So, uh, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll conclude here in terms of the discussion here. One thing that did come up there, there was a, there was a comment in, in the chat box there, and one very important as well, which was remiss of me to, to leave out. And that was the court finding the other day in respect of businesses versus their insurers. Very, a, a brilliant outcome for business. You know, the, the classic old insurers taking the umbrella in when it's raining. Um, very early days still, it's going to be tough enough to get the money out of the insurers, even though they've got that court case. Um, but a very, very important start. What I would say on that is making sure some business are able to hang on there because many won't, but it's, 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 it, was, it was a good good outcome and, and was the right outcome. It was the end of it. So um, every case is uh, different in that. We're, talk, we're talking here about conclusion, and it's the overall perspective we're trying to give here. So, yeah, there's lot, lots of moving parts at the moment, what's going on in the economy, what's going on in terms of what we do in the debt side. We're here to talk at any time. There is no sales pitch in terms of this, what we're doing today. Hopefully, we're just putting a, some other info back out there, like, like I said, in uh, uh, views and opinions. What we do have this evening, we've got a couple of the team there ready for you. If you've got a workshop, you want to chat through things, there's no charge, no charge at all. So if, if it's not you, if it's somebody else you think should just touch base, because like I said earlier, the the, the unknown and the BS out there is, is phenomenal. So, and if nothing else, it can help somebody's mind be at rest in terms of, or at least give them context where, where they are. Because if I had a pound for every time someone said, yeah, I was thinking about that, I was talking to a man in a bar. Uh, and then it, it, it turns out it's, it's garbage. Get, get the right advice, wherever it is, be it solicitor, accountant, us, whoever it is, right? And especially now, it's very good to talk. So that's us. That's our, that's our uh, webinar for today. Hopefully, the format nearly hung together there, me standing there like a lemon, and hopefully did, there were no profanities when we, my mic was still open. We're there if you want us, and again, today we're open for any inquiries, whatever way you want to look at them, and you'd be, uh, you'd be very welcome. One last question. Um, somebody's asking here about the view on directors liquidating following significant back, uh, bounce back loans. Uh, do you think, yes, I think there will be comeback. I don't know how this is going to pan out um, because the bounce back loans particularly were, were basically given out like car loans. Uh, and there's any number of companies that are going to fail. I know on that. Uh, no, no PG. Uh, the FT had a had a survey about three months ago, and the, the key word here is is intent. And what they said is, in terms of this, their review of businesses that took um, on the loans, uh, the the Bibbles loans there. What were the payment repayment uh, chances? Forty two percent said they didn't intend to pay it back. Which was damning in itself, but I don't think Rishi's expecting a great lot back, and I think that's his way of boost putting a boost into the economy. Whether it's the right boost, if it has been used inappropriately, there will be some scrutiny because the banks will have to make an effort to recover the money first before they get their uh, cover, if you like, and underwriting by the by the government. So uh, lots lots going to happen in that in that domain. Uh, the banks are already talking to debt collection companies, which is which is strange because they're not always great at their job. Uh, and but if it's done inappropriately and they're up for they're up for scrutiny, then yes, they will come at them. And I think that'd be the right thing to do as well because you cannot uh, we cannot use and abuse systems like that. Um, just sorry, just before we do go, there's a, another thing here. Point just come up here. Uh, somebody, that's okay. That's really good. Somebody giving them a bit of heads up. They'd like to put a bit of input in terms of an insolvency practitioner. Wouldn't be bad because we have got a theme coming up. It shouldn't happen to an insolvency practitioner. So thank you. That person will come back to you. Great. Thanks for your time. That's us. That's our contact details. Anything you want, give us a shout. Bye. Thank you.